Tessa Blanchard, Michael Elgin, Dave Chris, Joey Ryan, all gone from Impact Wrestling. What is going to be done with the Slammiversary main event? An Aces and Eights reunion has been teased. I discuss a really dumb What Culture article, and Don Callis teases Paul Heyman. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin, right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. So, bad things have been happening lately at Impact Wrestling. It was just supposed to be good times. Supposed to be good times. Slammiversary is coming up. Uh, we, were te- we were teasing all the potential you know, signings that are coming to Slammiversary, and it was a positive time for Impact Wrestling. Um, Everybody was psyched up. Everybody was talking about it. They were getting a lot of publicity, a lot of positive, positive publicity. And that kind of all changed in the last week as uh, Michael Elgin, Dave Chris, Joey Ryan, all gone from Impact Wrestling due to speaking out allegations. Uh, so so they're gone from Impact Wrestling. You know, Dave Chris, Joey Ryan, okay, it's they're, they're not major stars in Impact Wrestling, and you know they can survive. But Michael Elgin, Michael Elgin, that's a big hit. Michael Elgin is was was their top guy, was uh, going to be the next Impact Wrestling World Champion. Uh, so that that's that that's a big hit. That's a big hit for for um, for Impact Wrestling. But I applaud, I applaud Impact Wrestling. Uh, these three did bad things. You know the speaking out movement is nothing to joke around about. Uh, very very serious allegations and uh, they, they did bad things and they're being punished for it and Impact Wrestling did the right thing in uh, letting them go and that that's how I feel I know I understand like I said Michael Elgin big star was a top guy but um, nobody is above the law so things uh, being bad things think how things can't get any worse okay we Elgin Chris Ryan all gone you know Okay, very negative week. Things can't get any worse. But they did. They did. And uh, Tessa Blanchard's contract has been terminated from Impact Wrestling, and she's been stripped of the Impact Wrestling World Championship. This this came as a, a bit of a surprise to me, uh, and I think to every Impact Wrestling fan out there. I didn't see this coming at all. Now, I know... During the the first set of pandemic tapings, Tessa Blanchard didn't show up um, due to the pandemic, due to COVID nineteen. She's currently living in Mexico with her boyfriend Daga. Uh, I totally get it. She didn't want to travel up here. You know the pandemic. You know safety first. I totally get it. Totally understandable. And then a set of set, set of second set of tapings, she did, didn't show up either. Totally get it. Totally get it. You know safety first. Uh, but what I don't understand, what I don't get, is she was apparently supposed to send a video from Mexico that was going to be edited into a video promo that was going to be edited into an interview with uh, Josh Matthews. But she didn't send that. That I don't understand. That that indicates that there's there's definitely issues between the, both parties, between Impact Wrestling and Tessa Blanchard. So she didn't send those that that video that that was requested. And uh, they had to scramble and re-edit and, and re-edit the show and do stuff. But uh, that, that, was, that, was, um, that was interesting. And then they announced that she was going to be uh, in the Slammiversary main event. Whether she actually agreed to do it or not, I'm not sure. But they announced that she was going to be in the Slammiversary main event. And um, then a week later, a week or so later, they announced that she's been... Uh, Terminated from her contract, her contracts were terminated, and she's been stripped of the Impact Wrestling World Championship. So I, I, I was doing um, research on this, and the stories I'm seeing is um, she's getting married to Daga, and she was af- afraid of leaving Mexico and not being able to get back in, um, and of course, you know ruining the the chances of her getting married to Daga you know again and I I understand that again completely understandable 
this pandemic is is not a good thing. It's 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 been a tough thing for for many many people, and I understand. I totally understand. But on the flip side of that, on the flip side of that, you're the main champion. You're the basically the face of a major professional wrestling promotion, and with that comes responsibility. With that comes responsibility. And if you're asked to film a video, a video promo, and which they would edit into an interview, you do that. Well, I don't. You just do the video. I don't. I don't see why she just couldn't have just filmed that simple video in Mexico and send it up. Again, there must have been major, major issues between the two. Uh, which is why uh, maybe they, like I said, maybe they were negotiating and they couldn't, you know, they they couldn't work at something out. But you you're the champion of a major promotion, which means if you're going to leave, you need to drop the title. So you need to do it the right way. That, that's that's how I feel. You need to do it the right way. If you're the champion, you you got to do it the right way. You got to drop it the right way. And and again. She didn't want to come here, so it was a little, due to the pandemic, so it was a little dicey situation. I don't know, you know, if, if I was if I was Scott Demore, if I was Don Callis, I guess I would have done the same thing. I guess I would have done the same thing, but I'm wondering if she still has the title, if she's still in possession of the Impact Wrestling Championship. Uh, I guess she could mail it back. Um, I hope... <laughs> I hope if she mails it back, uh, there's a tracking number involved. You'd, you don't want uh, the Impact Wrestling World uh, World Championship to go missing. So hopefully, if she if she doesn't mail it if she does mail it back, you know she does it uh, with a tracking number so it could be tracked. <laughs> but uh, but no, again, really, um, I, I'm laughing, but it's it's really uh, been really tough week for Impact Wrestling. Really tough week. Then you think, what are they going to do with the Slammiversary main event? What are they going to do with the Slammiversary main event? I mean, it, it was uh, Tessa Blanchard versus Michael Elgin versus Ace Austin versus Eddie Edwards versus uh, Trey Miguel. So right now it's just Eddie Edwards versus Ace Austin versus Trey Miguel, which is not a very appealing main event in my opinion. Um, so what do you do? What do you do there? What do you do? Uh, the, uh, you could inject Moose into the main event. You could inject. You could inject Moose into the main event, and actually, Moose could say, uh, uh, "If I win, uh, the TNA uh, World Championship becomes the top title in Impact Wrestling." Uh, or you have to recognize TNA World Championship um, as a legitimate title and not just a prop that I'm holding on my shoulder. Uh, you could do that. You could do that. That that'd be a good idea. You could you could bring in some. Um, surprise entrance into into the match uh, you could do that the north the, you could say the winner of the north against um uh well they haven't really announced it yet but it's it's my feeling that the north is going to be defending the championship against uh ken shamrock and um sammy callahan again it hasn't been announced but that, that's my feeling and if that match does happen or whoever the north is wrestling whoever wins that tag team match uh the, the that tag team gets entered into the uh the world title match it, there's a number of things you could do a number of things you could do for this for the slammiversary main event uh but um and, and how do you get rid of this negativity right now how do you get rid of this negativity uh that uh that is happening with uh with all these releases very simple very simple don't wait for the surprise don't wait for the surprise i i truly feel that they have ec3 ec3 is going to be there and i have a very good feeling that uh, luke gallows and uh ken anderson i'm sorry um carl anderson ken anderson carl anderson are going to be uh gonna are going to be at slam anniversary so don't wait to make it a surprise, make the announcement now. Announce it now. Say EC3 will be at Slammiversary. We have come to an agreement with Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows to be at Slammiversary. Make the announcement now. Get that positivity back to Impact Wrestling. Because uh, you know, Tessa Blanchard, Michael Elgin, uh, Dave Chris, Joey Ryan, they're not irreplaceable. They are replaceable. Okay. Again, Elgin, Tessa Blanchard were, were top stars, but they are replaceable. They are replaceable. So, so make the announcements. If you have a huge person, a huge signing that's coming, make the announcement. Get that positivity back. Because get rid of uh, the negativity that's that's going on right now. Uh, 
You know, if I mean, if if you say uh, we we've uh, come to an agreement with EC3 to show up at at Slammiversary, that's going to be all over social media. That's going to be all over all over um, the the pro wrestling websites. You know, that's going to be the top story, and it's going to kind of you know overshadow the negative the, the negativity. So let's let's do that. That's what they should do. That's how they get rid of the negativity. You know, and what was funny that I noticed I noticed that um, there's a lot of uh, people out there. And I'm seeing a lot of uh, familiar names, but uh, a lot of people who are upset that a woman is the world champion, and and uh, they're upset that you know they, that Tessa, or well, they they're saying that Tessa Blanchard should be stripped of the or or not stripped, they they should take the the title off Tessa Blanchard when she was champion because it's stupid. Are the same people that's saying that they can't believe that Impact Wrestling uh, has let their world champion go? You know, if shouldn't these people just be uh, you know, happy, you know, they're just happy that, that Tessa Blanche is not the champion, that's what they wanted to begin with, but uh, they're impact wrestling complainers, complain about anything, so Tessa Blanche, when she was champion, they're saying, oh, she shouldn't be champion, she's a, she's a woman, and uh, should be, there should be a man as a champion, and the title should be taken off her, and blah, 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 they were saying this, and which was just stupid, I, I disagreed with, uh, well, I, I won't say it's stupid, but I, I, Everyone has their opinion, but I I disagree with it. But but then they're getting upset that you know that the world champion Tessa Blanchard has been terminated and stripped of her title, and now they're upset about that. So you, you can't win with these uh, with these um, Impact Wrestling complainers or these uh, these trolls, as I call them. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's 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 the way they could um, get rid of that negativity really fast. Um, make the announcement and with Tessa Blanchard gone I think now is um, a great time for them to sign Diona Perrazzo I know Diona Perrazzo uh, she's working on a per appearance basis she may have already signed I don't know but uh, now will be a great time for them to actually announce that they've signed her to a three year contract it would be a great time to announce that, they, that they've signed Nevea and it would be a great time to announce that uh, they have signed Kimberly, so let's let's get this positivity back. Let's get this positivity back in Impact Wrestling. Aces and Eights, Aces and Eights is being teased. Uh, they're they're doing the teasing. There's more teasing now with, with Aces and Eights. And uh, you saw in the last episode, uh, D'Lo Brown saying, uh, think, talking to somebody on the computer and saying, I think it's time to get the band back together. And he st- stands up and the Aces and Eight jacket is behind him. And, and you're thinking, ooh, who's he talking to? Now, my uh, my take on this is if it's not Bully Ray that's going to be coming in to do this, then then I think there's going to be little interest in Aces and Eights because if, if he's on... If he's on the computer talking to, I don't know, say he's talking to Mr. Anderson or Ken Anderson. You know, there, there, I got the name right this time. Ken Anderson. Uh, to me, for me, I don't know how other people might feel about it, but I, I don't, not as excited as I would be as if it was Bully Ray. So, like, if they do the Ace and H reunion and standing in the ring is D'Lo Brown, um, Ken Anderson, Mike Knox, and, say, Wes Briscoe and Garrett, Garrett Bischoff. I'm not... Uh, I'm not too excited about that. I'm not too excited about it. And then you think, do they do they really need to do the, an H and H reunion? I mean, is it really necessary? I, I know. I think they were going to do it during the the TNA um, pay per view that was canceled due to uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic. But uh, I don't. I don't. I don't know. It's uh, some people might might enjoy it, but again. Unless, you know, they're bringing back Bully Ray. And I think Bully Ray did express interest in, in doing a uh, Aces and H reunion. So unless Bully Ray is involved, unless he's actually talking to Bully Ray, and I, I hope he was, but unless he's talking to Bully Ray, I just the interest for me is just just not there. Just not there. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I'm not uh, the one to sound. I, I know I've been using the word negative a lot, but I don't want to sound negative, but that's that's... That's how I feel. I know Bully Ray was the top guy, and then, um, even if they could bring Bully Ray and Devon, Devon Dudley back, um, that would be uh, that would be that would be something that would have my interest. 
Uh, but anyway, so uh, let's move on. Explosion. I don't know if, if anyone saw Explosion. They had a really good match between the North and uh, Jack Stain and Crimson, the War Kings. I didn't know the War Kings were, were back. I don't know if they're back in Impact Wrestling. I, uh, it could be just a one-time thing, but it was a really good match. So if anyone has an opportunity to uh, to go to watch Explosion, it w- I think the last episode was Elgin versus Larry D, which was also a very good match. Uh, but I don't know if they're going to take that match down or not. But uh, before that week before that, the North versus the War Kings was a really good back and forth match. You know, if, uh, War Kings War Kings are a good tag team. You know, and they need more tag teams. I mean, I wouldn't mind having them come back in the tag team division. I wouldn't mind having them come back to the tag team division. They 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 prove that they're a really good team. And again, if you have an opportunity to watch the match on Explosion, I, I highly recommend uh, the North versus War Kings. All right, so Don Callis, Don Callis, basically teased that uh, Impact Wrestling may be signing Paul Heyman. Now. Forgive me here, but I think it's just ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous that he's he's kind of uh, insinuating that Paul Heyman. Uh, he didn't say Paul Heyman's name, but he was insinuating uh, Paul Heyman uh, is coming to Impact Wrestling. I, I think I think it's silly. It's not going to happen. Paul Heyman's not leaving the WWE. Paul Heyman was just uh, relieved of his duties as uh, I, th- I think I, I think it was a, a, a director of talent, I believe. Um, uh, role that he had, and he, he was he was relieved of his duties of that, but he's still signed by the WWE, and he's still the the mouthpiece for Brock Lesnar. He's still in the managerial role for Brock Lesnar. So Paul Heyman's not coming. So then so you gotta think, what was Don? What was Don Callis? I mean, I mean Don Callis. He might as well have just uh, might as well just tease that Triple H is coming. Just why, why stop at Paul Heyman? Say yeah, Triple H. We're gonna sign Triple H. You know, we're gonna sign Triple H. He's coming as well. So so why stop at Paul Heyman? But but here's what I think. Here's what I think. I think he was talking about Joey Styles. I think Don Callis definitely. I won't say I won't say definitely, but I, I think I think he may have been talking about Joey Styles because when he was first was in ECW, I think it was ninety nine to two thousand one. Uh, he was doing some announcing and he did announcing with Joey Styles. And uh, and he did mention uh, during that uh, during the the um, when he was uh, teasing Paul Heyman uh, that the person that's that the person that they were talking about you know taught him a lot you know and, and I'm sure Joey Styles taught him a lot about announcing and I know it's anniversary you know big things are going to happen I think a lot of things are going to change at Slammiversary and bringing in Joey Styles to replace Josh Matthews. That, that could be very interesting. That could be a very, very positive thing. Joey Styles, always, always good behind the mic. And it'll be good to hear somebody else calling the shots, doing the play-by-play after years and years of, of Josh Matthews. So bringing Joey Styles in would be, or maybe, who knows, maybe Joe Styles would be partnering up with Josh Matthews. I don't know if it's a replacement, uh, but I, I, I have a feeling that we're going to see Joey Styles coming in to uh to impact wrestling and i i really honestly believe that's who don Callis was talking about so uh, we'll keep our eyes on that and we'll see if if i'm correct we'll see if uh well i guess we won't find out till slammiversary uh so we'll see we'll see on slammiversary uh if unless they make an announcement that joey styles is coming in uh but we'll see you know joey styles is definitely available and i'm sure joey styles would like to get <laughs> would like to get back to work <laughs> so, so, uh, so we'll see. It's it's a it's a very very good possibility uh, that uh, we'll see the debut of Joey Styles at Slammiversary. Diona Perazzo has stated that. Um, let me pull up the article. That here's the article. It says Diona Perazzo was never comfortable in the WWE and why she feels great working for Impact Wrestling. And I'm going to read what she said here. It says Diona Perazzo. Uh, says that everyone at Impact are people I have known from before I went to NXT. They saw me coming up in every stage of my life. They have been welcoming and they have been welcoming and everybody was so happy I was in the locker room. They wanted me to feel a part and feel comfortable and not walk on eggshells. I never got to that point in NXT. 
I never got to that point where I was comfortable in my position there. Everyone here understands who I am and what I'm about. It's liberating and freeing and the best feeling that I am wanted. And that is just absolutely fantastic to hear that from Diana Perrazzo. So my question to Diana Perrazzo would be, What's keeping you from signing that three-year contract with Impact Wrestling? I know you're you have the the current um, per appearance deal, uh, but if you feel that strongly about Impact Wrestling, and all your friends are there, and you don't have to walk on eggshells, and you feel comfortable, sign a three-year contract. Sign a three-year contract with them. Stick around for three years, and you know you'll definitely be a Knockouts Champion. Uh, you'll be a top star in Impact Wrestling. Just Sign that contract. Sign that contract and get it over with. That's 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 what I that's my uh, that's my advice to Diana Prazo. <laughs> Sign the contract with Impact Wrestling and just get it over with already and uh, become one of the top stars of Impact Wrestling. There you go. Hopefully she's listening. She's not listening, but you know that that's uh, that's again that's my advice for for Diana Prazo. Now, let's uh, get into a, a really, another really dumb article that was released today, uh, three hours ago, three hours ago bef- uh, before I started recording on um, our buddies at whatculture.com. You know, so they released an article <coughs> that states, it's, 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 it's titled, 13 Wrestlers Who Are Better in New Japan Pro Wrestling than they were in TNA. Now, as soon as I read that, as soon as I read that title, I was thinking, what a bunch of absolute idiots for even insinuating that wrestlers that have come to TNA are doing better in New Japan Pro Wrestling. First of all, first of all, some of the names that are on there, of course, you're Tetsuya Naito, uh, Kazuchika Okada, um, who else is on there? Sonata, uh, Hiroki Goto, um, Jushin Thunder Liger is on on there as well. We're gonna get into those names, but but these are New Japan Pro Wrestling guys. Let me explain for for those who are not familiar with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, anyone that comes up in New Japan Pro Wrestling and when they first start in their rookie year, they're called a young lion. They're young lions. They don't have any characters. They just wear black trunks and black boots, and they're they they're rookies, and they're known, as I said, as young lions. And once they have a few matches under their belts, and New Japan Pro Wrestling feels that they're ready, these rookies are sent on excursion throughout the world to promotions that New Japan Pro Wrestling partners with. And these excursions for the young lions who are rookies are developmental tours so when Kazuchika Okada was in TNA he was a young lion on excursion on a developmental tour when Tetsuya Naito was in TNA he was on excursion doing a developmental tour when Hiroki Goto and Sanada were in TNA they were on developmental tours they were on excursion they were young lions they were rookies it was their first year of pro wrestling. And they state in this article that they, they, when these wrestlers were in TNA, they, they didn't become stars in TNA. They're not supposed to become stars in a promotion that they're on, that they're development, they're on developmental with or an excursion, I should say. When they're on, I'm just, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting worked up. When they're, when, when they're on excursion, they're not supposed to go to the promotion and become a top star there. They're supposed to learn their craft and become better professional wrestlers. So when the time is right, they can go back to New Japan Pro Wrestling and become major stars. That's how New Japan does it with their rookies and I think it's brilliant. I think it's 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 fantastic what how New Japan develops new stars. They they do it the right way. But but for for what culture to come out and say that we have 13 wrestlers who are better in New Japan than they were in TNA is just outrageous. Outrageous. And other names that are on this list 
you know, Tai Chi. Tai Chi is a big star right now in, in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Tai Chi wrestled two freaking matches for TNA in 2004. One was a gauntlet match and one was a fatal four-way. And that was it. That was it for him in TNA. Hiroki Goto had three matches who he's also on this has had three matches in TNA back in 2006 at the World X Cup was in a gauntlet match and a fatal four way and I think one tag team match as well. So to have him on the list is just ridiculous to say that somebody who has had two matches in TNA and someone who has had three matches in TNA is having a much better career in New Japan Pro Wrestling where they've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of matches. It's just stupid it's just stupid and on this list also as i mentioned is jushin thunder liger they say jushin thunder liger is better in new japan pro wrestling than he was in tna jushin thunder liger had three matches in tna in 2005 and 2006 i think two in 2005 one in 2006 but his career started in new japan pro wrestling in 1984 and in 1984 for New Japan Pro Wrestling, he had 140 matches. So for them to say, and that was just in 1984, and, and, and he just retired last year. For them to say, to put him on this list, to say that, that Jushin Thunder Liger is much better in New Japan Pro Wrestling than TNA is just outrageously, asininely ridiculous. It's just stupid. Of course he's better in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Why are you even making the comparison? Why are you even making the comparison? Oh, shame on you, what culture. Shame on you, what culture.com. Anyway, that's it for me. My name is Lewis Carlin. Thanks for listening today. This is Shooting Up North. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. And stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.